movie mavens welcome back to another video on the b movies channel my name is bailey and i put the b in movies i hope you're having a great week i'm definitely feeling a lot better um i didn't realize how much of a brain fog i was in from covid until i started really getting better this week and so uh thank you for your patience last week about the video and everything and so i just really appreciate all of you so let's go ahead and dive into today's video. We have a stacked video today. We have some new analog horror series updates, uh, the fall products I'm excited for. So let's jump right into it. Uh, so for today's Bailey Babbles, um, I don't know if it's just me, but it just feels like there's something different when fall hits. Like the air is electric. It almost feels like the color scape of the world changes. It feels like my body, like the chemistry of my body's different. Um, and I just love this time of year so much. I'm just, I'm so excited to paint my pumpkins. I'm so excited to force my sister <laughs> to go <laughs> to stores and to get uh, all kinds of little gimmicks for me since I don't drive. Um, I'm excited to listen to my Halloween and fall playlist that I definitely haven't already been listening to, wink, wink. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited that fall and Halloween are here, y'all. And I've made a, an executive decision, which people will be like, are you okay? I promise I'm okay. I've decided this year, so y'all know, normally I go all out for Halloween. Like I take entire things in my house down and put them in my utility closet and this year I've decided, I've bought some new stuff. I've been very fortunate to be able to get some, some new blow molds and things. And I've decided that this year, because we all know this year has been a chaotic year for me, I'm going to focus more on the experiences of Halloween and fall. So like going to special screenings, doing my 98 costumes that I do, um, everything in that vein. And I think what I'm, I'm still going to paint my pumpkins. I'm still going to decorate my patio, listen to my playlist, do the 31 day challenge that I do. But I've just decided that this year, huh, excuse me, that I'm going to go low key on decorating and give myself a little bit of grace because it has been such a, uh, this year has been so nutty. And so I'm going to focus more on the experiences and I am okay, but that's just a decision I made this morning. So, um, just a, uh, your basically weekly reminder to give yourself grace. Uh, be patient with yourself. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now that's scary. And so, you know, definitely be patient with yourself. And so that's why I've decided this year I'm not going to go all out decorating. I'm going to do some stuff. I'm not going to do anywhere near the caliber I usually do. And then by this time next year, um, I'm kind of redoing my office. Sounds a lot more dramatic. I'm sincerely, my sister and brother-in-law are bringing me a couple things from my mom's storage unit to help kind of cut down on the clutter in my office. And so by this time next year, I should be a lot more organized too. So it should be a lot smoother to get stuff in, take stuff down. So with the Bailey Babbles out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into this week's blog roundup. Uh, so on Monday, we talked about PT. If you never played PT, um, you can find playthroughs, but unfortunately when the game was canceled, it's been taken out of the PlayStation Store. Uh, but it's scary. It's scary. And if you aren't sure what I'm talking about, it was dropped. It was the backdoor teaser for the Silent Hills game with Norman Reedus that um, Kojima and Gamma del Toro did together. It never came to fruition. It got canceled. And so, sorry, for context, I'm not still, this is not the COVID I cleaned some stuff this morning and I am so sensitive to dust that this is sincerely I'm this congested just from cleaning some some stuff just dusting a little bit so anyway um it was back to our trailer for um Silent Hills and as soon as the game's canceled it was removed from all the PlayStation stores so there are people that sell their PlayStations that still have P that have PT on it because if you downloaded it you can still play it and they're selling them for like thousands of dollars so that was Monday, Tuesday. We talked about some of the horror content I'm excited for. Um, there are a lot of really good movies coming out this month and next month that I'm really looking forward to, including a new VHS. Um, on Wednesday, we talked about haunted attraction horror. I've been watching the Hell House LSC series, which I love, um, including I love the fourth one. I thought the fourth one was great, the Carmichael Manor. I'm really excited for the fifth one next year. 
Um, and it just kind of made me think about, hey, we've never done a roundup of those. <laughs> uh, so, so we did. Um, on Thursday, we talked about songs that would have been on Glee. These are all songs from the 2020, 2020s that definitely would have been on Glee. Like, I can almost guarantee you, as someone who watched Glee all the way through. And then on Friday, we talked about the fall products I'm excited for. And that's going to be our deep dive today. Y'all know that I am so obsessed and chronically online when it comes to things like this. So I'm going to run you through some things I'm excited for. Some are new. Some are things that I just get excited for every year, but we will go through them together. So just to recap, this week over on the B-Movies blog, you got PT, horror content that I'm excited for, um, haunted attraction horror, songs that would have been on Glee, and fall products I'm excited for. You can find all of those pieces in the description box below, as well as over on bmovies.blog, and we drop pieces around 10 a.m. every Monday through Friday, Central Standard Time. So next up, we have Bite Size Sunday which if you're new to the channel, these are just tiny little reviews that live over on our Instagram, which is at the movies channel, same as our YouTube. And they're just things I want to talk about, but may not, I may not have enough to say for a full piece. And so this week's, oh my gosh, this week's teaser is Agatha Christie would never. Um, I'm really excited to talk about this piece of content because it just came out yesterday, Hint Hint, and I've already watched all the episodes, so <laughs> I'm excited to talk about it. Um, so yeah, you can just find those. I post those around 8 or 9 a.m. Central Standard Time over on the B-Movies channel Instagram and give us a follow while you're over there. Um, and also, we don't tease these on our Instagram, so it's a perk of subscribing to the YouTube channel. Cough, cough. Uh, so next up, now that all the housekeeping is out of the way, let's get in to today's deep dive. Um, so up top, y'all loved last year's edition of No Tricks, Fall Treats, and I am nothing but a woman of the people, <laughs> and so I decided to bring it back again this year, and I know someone already asked, yes, I will be doing it again in December as well for winter and Christmas things I'm excited for. Don't worry. there, There's already some stuff that I've heard about that I already have saved for that piece. Don't worry. Um, and you know, like this again goes without saying, this is my favorite time of the year. Halloween is my favorite holiday. There are always so many fun little products that again, some are new, some are returning. And so I have carefully curated a list of some of the things I'm most excited about. Um, and as always, want to give a huge shout out. If you're not following Marky Devo on, I follow him on Instagram. We all know that's my social media platform of choice. But I believe he has Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Um, definitely follow him because he is in the know about so many things. And that's what makes this list so easy is because I hear about all these things from him. So it's so easy when it comes time to do this piece to go through it. So, um, without any further ado, let's get into some of the products I'm excited for. And so we have three categories as always, drinks, food, and merchandise. So drink-wise, obviously, Mountain Dew's Voodoo. Get it every year, try it every year. Um, Sporked has actually already tried it. If you don't know Sporked, they're the food review uh, website. They're affiliated with Mythical. And I won't spoil it for you, but they have a guess for this year's flavor. Uh, next up, we have the Beetlejuice Fanta collaboration, which is, you know, the new flavor, the Haunted Apple, as well as the special edition orange, strawberry, and pineapple cans that feature Ingrid, Lydia, and Delia. Um, so, so far, I have tried the Beetlejuice Haunted Apple, and it tastes like a liquefied caramel apple pop. It's wild. I don't know if I could drink another one. I barely got through the one that I had. So that's just, I would recommend getting the bottle. I just had no other option but the 12 pack. That was the only option I, I had. So I went for it. Don't worry. Um, I already have some people. The, the, the rest of the cans are all vouched for. Like, I'm not going to let them go to waste. I would drink them myself if I had not already gotten the other cans vouched for. 
Um, and so I'm really excited. I have the ink grid. I got a bottle of the orange. So now I'm just on the hunt for Lydia and Delia and should be getting those later today. Very excited. Um, so next up, we have Chobani's, their oat milk. Um, they put out a, sp a very special like barista pumpkin spice limited batch oat milk as well as their pumpkin spice coffee creamer. I'm a big oat milk girly because I'm kind of like toast intolerant and I kind of don't do anything about it. Um, and so that's one, <laughs> that's one avenue I am willing to take to cut my lactose intolerance. I love oat milk. So looking forward to those immediately following <laughs> up with International Delights Pumpkin Pie Spice Cold Foam Creamer, <laughs> which is not uh, dairy free. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying. Uh, so those are my big like beverages that I'm looking forward to. Um, haven't seen anything about what the Fanta returning, but I'm pretty sure that like Beetlejuice may be taking the spot of that, but also it's early September, so who can be sure. Uh, next up, let's go ahead and move into the food. So first up, the Trick or Treat Tic Tacs. They're cute. One's orange, one's black. It's a novelty thing for me. A lot of the food stuff, it's just novelty. And like, do I eat it? Yes. Or like, do do I pass it on to someone who's going to eat it? Absolutely. It does not go to waste. Um, so really excited to try those. Uh, really excited to try, because a lot of you may not know this, but one of my favorite candies um, are Mike and Ike's and they're doing a sour spooky treat. Super excited to try those. Uh, Tyson spooky nuggets are coming back. Love those. They're so much fun. Um, so really excited to get those. Uh, my beloved Sour Patch Kid Apple Harvest. If you <laughs> can find a bag of these, grab them. They came out last year. They're one of my favorite treats, period. And they sell out like crazy. I think last year I maybe got two bags the entire season. And then this year I went ahead and grabbed one. Because last month when I did a road trip, I saw one in one of the stores we were in and I snatched it up. So definitely highly recommend these. They're really, really good. So if you find a bag and you can swing it, definitely grab one. Uh, next up, Duncan Hines, as, we all, as a lot of us know has a Dolly Parton line, and they're doing a pumpkin spice cookie mix this year. They did a Christmas one last year, uh, but really excited to try this one out. Um, Twizzlers this year is doing little ghost-shaped Twizzlers. Um, really excited to try those. Uh, ghost Toast Kit Kats, which are like a cinnamon toast Kit Kat. Super excited to try those. Um, Reese's Werewolf Tracks. It's like a vanilla cream on top. The traditional chocolate on the bottom it's kind of split in half tried these i think they're good um so would recommend they don't taste super different um i know it's vanilla cream and you're like bailey how is that those are two different things chocolate and vanilla but to me with the peanut butter and everything it doesn't taste all that different uh but i think again it's fun uh witches brew kit kats these are some of my favorite candy period um i don't know if you've ever had them they're like a marshmallow cream dipped Kit Kat. And I go through these like crazy during <laughs> October because they're so good. And then I make everyone try them and everyone always loves them. So definitely the Witch's Brew Kit Kats are on my list. Um, Inman's has um, apple cider donuts this year. I don't, in my area, there's not a lot of Inman's stuff. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to try these, but I, I am excited to try to find them. Uh, Pillsbury is doing a pumpkin spice cinnamon roll. Super stoked to try that. Um, and then Pop-Tarts. I'm a huge Pop-Tart fan. I love Pop-Tarts. I grew up on Pop-Tarts. Um, they're doing little trick-or-treat pouches called Pop-Tart Vampire Bites. It's a strawberry Pop-Tart. I think they're really cute. Um, I do know that they're up on Amazon. Um, so really excited to try to snack some of those as well. And so finally... We've come to the merchandise part of our program. Um, this year, the Funko exclusive, I believe this is this year's Funko exclusive is how I understood it. Or, sorry. This year's Spirit Halloween Funko exclusive. I believe this is it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. Because for those who don't know, Spirit Halloween always usually does, like, a Spirit exclusive Funko, like... Last year, they did some killer clowns from outer space. Here before that, it was um, the kids from Trick or Treat that were on the bus. There was one of those, so on and so forth. 
So this year they have a Wednesday Adams Funko Pop that's like glitter dusted. And she's really cool. And she even has her headless doll. And I definitely want to try to score one of those. Um, there are new Halloween Pez dispensers. Some of them are not new. Um, but I've already gotten the vampire. And I really want, there's a little ghost, a little bat. And I'm really, I'm looking out for those. Uh, next up, Spirit Halloween also does this thing where they do little baby versions of horror icons, which I know sounds crazy, but just follow me. Um, and they have an Art the Clown one that I want really bad because he even has on his little like sunflower sunglasses, but they almost immediately sold out. <laughs> they have been sold out for weeks. So I'm hoping I can find one at Spirit in the Wild, um, but I'm not holding my breath on that one because we all know like, especially with the release of Terrifier 3 here in a few weeks, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get one of these, but I would like one. And then finally, Wendy's has announced the cutest freaking toys. It's their Frosty Frights toys. So they have taken the Frosty and made it into different characters. So there's like a Franken Frosty. There's a Vampire Frosty. There's a Werewolf Frosty. There's a, um, a Witch Frosty. And they're so cute. And I am just, I've already told my sister, I'm like, I hope you're prepared to eat several children's meals because <laughs> I need some of these toys. Uh, so they're super cute. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm excited for. Again, this is all, as you know, like last year, these are all things that have only been announced up until now. If there are other stuff, I'll update the list. Um, and we can definitely talk about them in <laughs> subtitles, but that's kind of where we are right now. So those are my fall products. Again, that vlog will be linked below and I have pictures of everything. Um, so yeah, just, just excited. Uh, so next up for special features. So for full disclosure, I was going to go see Beetlejuice Beetlejuice this week. Both times I tried to go, it just did not happen. Um, one time, for those who don't know my dog Sadie, she's a lot of anxiety stuff and she had a really bad, she'll sometimes have these really bad panic attacks. I have to give her a little doggy. CBD treats and so I didn't feel right going and leaving her alone and the second time I was just tired um that's the one thing that got me with COVID again I was very fortunate to not have a lot of symptoms outside of just some congestion but the fatigue part and the brain fog are what really hit me with COVID and like now that I'm really coming out of it um I'm I'm realizing like how tired I was and how kind of like off my game I was I guess and so we will talk about Beetlejuice Beetlejuice next week because I am going to see it tomorrow um and so we'll talk about that and I'm also going to see the front room this weekend <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure that I will have things to say about it too for those who don't know that's the new one with Brandy it's a 24 horror movie so yeah those will be next week but I have some great stuff in the interim. So first up, let's talk about Leslie Hall and the lies. So I was not familiar with Leslie Hall until recently. And I don't remember exactly how I found her. But Leslie Hall was in this band. She's kind of like, um, a, um, like a, like a comedy musician, I guess is the best way to put it. And she has a song called Zombie Killer with her band. I think it's Leslie in the Lies is I believe how you say it. Maybe Leslie in the Lees. Um, and it's featuring Elvira. So it's a gem. Um, it's, I wasn't familiar, like I said, with Leslie Hall at all. But I love this song. I love this music video, like from the campiness of the visuals and the outfits to like this thriller-esque intro from Elvira at the beginning. Uh, so I am here for it. And I'll drop the link for the video in the description box below because I think this is the perfect way to kick off spooky season. Uh, it's just really fun. So next up, let's talk about, so Alex Archives um, Hollow Birds series. So as you know, I loved Alex Archive's previous project called Ted's Caving Journal based off of the old like creepy pasta. So I was really excited to dive into his latest project. I was just waiting for there to be a few more episodes. Um, and so I feel like now is the perfect time to go through everything with you. So the first installment in the Hollow Bird series is called New Teeth. It's a found footage. Uh, it's like a 10 minute found footage video. 
and it appears to be secret tapes from some sort of chemical company. And this occurs in 2007. So we learn that someone was unalive and whoever or whatever committed the act is supposed to be brought in alive. And so we have, you know, our traditional one guy with the camera and it seems like another guy helping him out. So our camera operator is searching and walking. And then finally we hear like a low growling noise. And our camera operator begins to book it naturally and we hear screaming in the background so then our camera operator we find out that another member of the search group was unalived and our camera operator just books it again upon discovering his body and so as it always is the case in horror movies our camera operator our dude our guy almost makes it back to the car before we see something with sharp teeth get him and he and the camera fall to the ground. Now, if you pause the video towards the end of the video, which we all know I'm notoriously, I am so bad about catching that stuff in the right moment and have to do it like 98 times. There's a news clip that says where monsters roam, dot, 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 a different kind of game park. And there's a photo of a couple whose faces are, uh, like, blacked out, essentially. And so this leads me to believe that this is some sort of terrifying Jurassic Park situation, but with maybe cryptids or other types of creatures. And it's not that dinosaurs aren't terrifying, but, like, you get what I mean. Like, some sort of, like, unnatural entities are in this park. So the next video in the Hollow Bird series is log one underscore drawings. And we watch as someone like intensely sketches for what we can tell is hours. He then addresses someone named Anna and presents today's drawings, which appear to be some sort of hand or tree with like this giant eye like kind of busting out of the center. We also learn that this guy isn't sleeping very well. And there's a text card at the end that says, I think this is drawing 65-R. And then there's a correction in the subtitles to 56. And then as we get a, a still of the drawing, underneath we see something that says property of tea chemical, which is where the previous photo, which is where the previous video was from. That's where that footage was from as well. So we can assume that tea chemical... They may be the big bad or the big brother in this scenario. So the next video, which is log two underscore drawings update, we learn from this character that he uploaded the previous video to YouTube. So he uploaded log one and he begins reading through the comments. And then we get some sort of error message from Blackberry. You have to pause it to see it again which I believe should be a photo of the drawing from the previous video that's been removed for some reason. It's like a Blackberry like 404 like photo cannot be found. So I think someone or something has removed that photo. He then tells he then tells Anna that like something is watching him and the new medication she sent is like kind of working. Um, and so it's clear like there there's his sister either works in the medical field or maybe is, you know, helping with his treatment in some way. We also learned that the drawing from today is number 57 and it looks like the toothy guy from the first video in the series that we briefly got a glimpse of before that guy got got and he looks like he's poking his head over some sort of rock wall. So we can infer that this is probably some sort of exhibit based on that news clipping from the end of the first video. And then there's a knock and the video, this video ends. So in log three underscore old pictures, we learn that the lead character opened the door to find someone with boxes of stuff who didn't say who they were or where they were from or even where the stuff was from. So he calls Anna, um, I think it's Anna in the video, but it may be Anna, I think it's Anna, who says that the stuff is from a place called Nurturing Souls, which is apparently the children's home that Anna and our lead character stayed at. 
apparently, like, it has closed down, and they asked Anna if she and our, our main character wanted their old things. And so now we can presume that Anna and our character are brother and sister. So we're establishing a, a good connection right off the bat of these two are siblings. The video briefly glitches and then continues to glitch for, for the, its entirety as our lead character and Anna talk about all their old childhood things. Um, our lead character begins unpacking he and Anna's old belongings and he finds a DVD and starts watching it. Um, it, it. He starts out like very sentimental. You can tell that he's like enjoying the video. And then his face shifts as someone begins humming and he starts to cry. And then he calls Anna and he seems frantic and asks if she got the pictures that he sent her. Um, we learn that our lead character, he apparently doesn't remember like the events that are in the pictures and Anna continues to just tell him she's busy and can't talk and is just trying to rush him off the phone and like will, won't discuss it. She eventually hangs up and there's a message at the end for Anna to call him back. And so it's safe to say at this point that our lead character is R, is the one who's been putting these messages at the end of the videos. So from here on out, I'm going to refer to him as R. Um, at the end of the video, if you pause at the right time, there's another clip from a newspaper with the headline, Take a Trip into the Past. So again, continuing with, I think this is some sort of Jurassic Park-esque attraction that very much went awry, is what I'm assuming. So we then see the pictures R was referring to that seem to show he and Anna fishing as the same humming we heard earlier continues in the background. And then we see, we get a screenshot of the back of one of the photos and someone has written my son's seventh bestest birthday with the date October 17th, 1994 and some sort of it's a line with a circle in the middle. And so I'm not sure if that's like a signature. I'm not sure if it's some sort of icon. I'm sure we will find out. It may even be nothing, but it may just be my analog horror brain looking for any clues possible. Um, so one thing I want to point out is on these photos, there's some sort of alligator in the background on one, and I couldn't tell if it was fake or if it was supposed to be one of the creatures. Because, you know, like sometimes that, you know, if they were at like some sort of park, it could be a statue. But I want to say maybe that alligator is one of these like alleged creatures. <laughs> Who can say? So I just wanted to point that out. So in log four underscore burnt egg, the video begins to glitch in the same way the previous video did. And we watch as R is preparing his breakfast and is looking through another box of stuff. And he's looking at a book that he sits down and we can see is titled Animals Can Almost Be Human, which we'll come back to this. And we watch as he is so preoccupied with like going through their stuff his egg burns and it just continues to burn as he's looking through all of their belongings. Um, after he gets the egg off the burner, finally, we walk through him as he does his morning routine, including watching him feed the neighborhood dog, uh, which shout out, because I think this is the dog for the same dog from Ted's Caving Journal. But correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone knows. Uh, then we cut to 2 a.m. the next morning. And R is drenched in sweat as he begins to sketch. He then falls asleep on the desk and then violently awakes from what appears to be some sort of night terror. And the sketch itself is the woods and it appears to be some sort of tall, dark figure that looks that I think that I think there may have been like two little white spaces for its eyes. And we then cut to R in the bathroom and R begins brushing his teeth and then spits up a decent amount of blood. Um, and we find out in the next scene, his gums have started bleeding and he's calling Anna to ask if this is a side effect from the meds that she gave him. But it, it's a decent amount of blood. Um, R then tells Anna more about the photos he found, including like there's, excuse me, one of them on a Ferris wheel, one from a museum where Anna actually knocked out two of her teeth. And then he starts crying 
and tells Anna that his nightmares are getting worse and he's starting to see them. And again, he begs her to call him back. We then cut to midnight that night, going into the next day. And we see R watching the same video from the last episode with someone singing and humming. We also get a look at the sketch from the day. It's very crude. It's very rudimentary. It's like a child drew it, which is a departure from the previous sketches because previous sketches are like masterfully drawn. And it looks like someone at a tree of some sort and there's an obstructed sign that to me looks like it may say farm or park. And it also looks like the person on the left half may be unalived, which could be a reference to that incident that we saw um, earlier in the first video. And so that's what we have so far. So these are the episodes that are up so far. Um, so here are my theories. I think that R and Anna were the children of the couple who created this park that was mentioned in that first um, newspaper in the first episode. I think something terrible happened to their parents and I think that's how they ended up in the children's home. I also believe, and this is a wild one, I believe Anna works for T Chemicals and or T Chemicals is the parent is the company their parents founded. I think that I think that these are I think that's why she gave him the medication. I think that's where she works. Or she, and even if it's not their parents company, I think she's I think Anna is associated with them in some capacity. And then finally I think R might not be human. And what I mean by that is, if you remember a minute ago when I talked about the book he was reading, that animals can almost seem human, that to me was not placed in the shot by accident. And judging by like how well everything has been crafted so far, how well Ted's caving journal was crafted, that was not an accident. And so I definitely think this may also have something to do with it. That may also be why R doesn't remember these things. Regardless, I really, really like this series. I think Alex Archives is definitely a channel to watch because, like I said, Ted's Caving Journal was great. And I think we're really watching the rise of a of a major new voice in analog horror. I truly do. Um, and I will link Alex Archives' channel below. Um, and I'll link the playlist for Hollow Birds thus far. But yeah, I'm I'm excited to see where this one goes. So next up. We have, y'all, I'm so excited. I told you last week. The East Patch has released. It's either the third part of Angel Hair or a spinoff in the video Disc 1 Cast Down. And I'm so excited. So this video starts with a guy clearly shooting a video for someone as he tells us that, you know, we probably didn't expect to hear from him. He then begins to mock who we can assume it to be Jonah by saying, oh, I forgot you read your videos. So he switches from a vlog style to more of like the narrated title card style that we're used to from Angel Hair. Throughout several notes on a bulletin board, we learn that this guy um, has been playing a video game since childhood called Hyrax on the Rocks. We learn that like with Jonah's experience with Angel Hair, this game seemed to speak to him while other copies of the game had no actual voices. Again, similar to Jonah, the game seemed to be a source of comfort for this guy. It seemed to know when he was upset or sad and be sentient. Um, his copy of the game always had a new mission while all the other copies only seemed to have one mission. And we can tell it's very similar to Angel Hair and how, how Gabby seemed to talk to Jonah. So this guy claims that he's tired of playing and that he's going to be doing one final run of the game. Like this is his last run and he doesn't want to explain how it got to this point. Um, we also see a character in the game that seems to be based off of Jonah and we learn that the guy who has been making this video, his name is Segan. And we also see that Segan, like, seems to be asking Jonah for help. Um, according to him, things are just getting worse. And, like, Jonah has seen this kind of crazy before. 
and the video ends with a note saying, good luck, Jonah, your old alibi, see again. And then the camera zooms out and we can see that Jonah is watching Segan's video in the center while Gabby and Francis are on the left and Zaggy is on the right in his, in his spy cartoon form. And Jonah holds up a copy of the game on the, what we can assume to be um, uh, Segan's floppy disk. And Jonah holds it up and we, at least we're assuming this is Jonah. And Gabby says, wait right as the video cuts off and i am so excited to see where this goes and to the east patch y'all are so talented truly like i i know i, I said it before and i'll say it again i love like y'all are a channel where i will as soon as i see an upload i will pause shows i will do whatever and immediately hop over to your channel to watch it uh so i'm really excited to see where this is gonna go so last up today let's go ahead and pop into our subtitles aka just little bite-sized pieces of news from the internet that i want to talk about um so first up, the cast of Only Murders in the Building has announced that a fifth season has been, that it has been renewed for a fifth season. So it's, another season is coming. Um, Netflix has announced an animated series based on Twilight, which like, I'll be seated. I'll just be honest. <laughs> um, animation and Twilight, which was a lot of my teenage years. Like, come on. Uh, Polly Pocket has announced a Stranger Things collab, so soon you'll be able to hold the city of Hawkins in your hand. If you've not seen it, it's very cool. It looks like a walkie-talkie. It, it, it's very cool. Um, so I think that's really fun. Uh, Lady Gaga has, has teased the release of Lady Gaga 7, and the first single will drop sometime next month. So looking forward to that. Um... The Terrifier 3 gang has officially joined the guerrilla marketing game and set up a number for fans to call and you can leave a voicemail. Uh, so give 777-837-7439 a ring, if you dare. And if you can't remember it, it's just 777-TERRIFY is what it spells out. Uh, next up, the Boulay Brothers have officially announced that season six of Dragula will premiere on October 1st with a monstrous 90 minute long episode. And so there's a variety article out and apparently like this is like they've been saying on the podcast, this is like the next chapter for Dragula. Really excited to see where what this season is going to be because there is a lot of really good teasing going on. So very excited. And finally, the trailer for uh, Yuzumaki has finally dropped. Um, if you don't know, this has been in development hell for a long time, it seems. And will premiere on Adult Swim September 29th and will be available the next day on Max. Um, it's based on the works of Junji Ito. It's his Spirals um, themed work. It's a mini miniseries. Um, so, yeah. So that will do us for today. Um, so I guess all that's left to do is wrap up. Um, so be sure to follow us on Instagram at BMovies channel. Uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Lisa underscore Frankenstein underscore. Uh, follow Elliot on Instagram at reading dot with dot red. Um, be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed. It's free. Uh, leave us a like if you feel so inclined and leave us a comment if you're feeling frisky. And on that note, all that's left to do is fade to black.